What is up guys, Doug Polk here and we're back with another episode of Poker Hands and today we're going to be taking a look at a pop between Matt Berkey and Jason Mercier from Poker Night in America. For Bill Perkins to get it in Drawing Dead versus uh, Berkey. Oh, he got it in Drawing Dead? Yeah, he had a top pair versus a set on the turn. That's not going to play well. No, I do. Doesn't play well. Mercier wakes up with ace balls. Of course he does. He had kings last time. It wasn't good enough. Now Berkey's in for how much? 100? He's in for 100, correct. There's only a 3 Yeah, we're going to happen. He can't put the 8 on it. How's he going to put the 64 on it? Yeah. Fuck. He's got his rules. He's got a raise with the 6 8 of hearts to Mercier's aces. It's like tan with plaid and green. You know, that's the rule. 11,000 did he just call or did he raise? No, he raised. He made it 11-3. 11-3. 11-2. 11-2. What do you think about that? Too big or no? I think Berkey's going to call this type of hand. I think a different hand he folds because this hand is easy to play. Yeah. Plus, he's up a lot of money, so why not? That too. Our hand begins with a straddle to 400 and a re-straddle to 800, so we're playing some pretty high stakes here. The action folds to Matt Berkey in the cutoff, who looks down to 8-6 suited, and opens up to $3,000. Definitely a winning play here in the cutoff. You're going to want to play some suited one gappers like 8-6 suited to disguise some of your stronger holdings. The action then folds to Jason Mercier in the big blind, although really it's the middle-ish blind given that there are four blinds going on, and he looks down at pocket aces, my favorite hand. At this point, he decides to 3-bet to 11.2 thousand, and I like the size. Maybe if you're in position, you can look to go more like 9 or 10 thousand, but out of position, you want to make it 11, 12, 13 thousand to deny the odds of the player in position from getting a good price to flat. The remaining blinds fold and the action's back over to Matt Berkey with 8-6 suited. Now on a 100,000 deep stack, really about 120-ish blinds given the straddle size, I like a flat here. This hand plays well in position and you can look to maybe outmaneuver your opponent on some runouts. Let's take a flop. Ooh. Hello. <laughs> no, we were talking about no big That pots. is not an action flop. I don't know what See, to See, I was just you. complaining. People are going to think that I, that I saw this hand in advance, but I didn't that there wasn't a big pot, and I, I think that we're going to have a big pot in this hand. <laughs> Top set versus a pair to flush draw. I'd probably get in a couple million on this on this flop with Berkey's hand. Well, I definitely ain't folding. No. If you're folding, then you should leave the table. The flop comes ace-jack-8 with two hearts, and both players crush the flop. Now, the reason I picked this hand is I think that there's a lot of options here for both players on the flop, and we're going to begin with Jason Mercier's decision to c-bet. Now, while this cannot be a bad situation to c-bet, any money your opponent puts in, they're behind, and additionally, you deny their equity with some holdings, I do think it's important to sometimes work checking into your game here on the flop. By checking with top set, you allow your opponent some room to come after you if he has a hand like a draw and just wants to try and bluff you off the pot. And additionally, when you do have a hand like kings or queens, it protects you a little bit to have some strong hands. Also, if your opponent knows you're always going to bet these hands, they can get really aggressive with you when you do choose to check, and that's going to make your life very difficult. So he kicks it off with a bet here on the flop, which I don't mind at all, but at the same time, I do think checking might be a little bit of a stronger play. The other problem with betting is that you know your opponent's way less likely to have an ace because you have two of them. So all in all, it's an okay decision, but I'd like to mainly see a check. Now over to Matt Berkey with bottom pair and a flush draw. And here I would very much like to see him go for a flat. One of the things about these situations in position is that by calling, you allow yourself an opportunity to really outplay your opponent on later streets. In fact, one of the best things about flying a 3 bet in position when you face aggression is that you can put your opponent in tough spots on a variety of runouts. By raising, you take away that positional advantage, the advantage you get to have by going last. So I would much prefer to see Berkey go for a call here. Let's see what he does. So he bets 12-3 after he had 3-bet to 11-2. I think that's See, Berkey's size. only looking at, well, how much is this whole hand going to cost me right now if I get it in because I'm never folding. Now, if you're Berkey here, are you raising or are you just calling? I think Berkey's raising. Okay. Because the way he played the hand versus chance, yeah, he's raising. I know I'm raising. 
and it appears that he is following the Jaffe Ream school of poker. And Mercier does not just call here. Mercier just says, I'm all in. So he made it. He made it 32,000, so it's almost 20 more for Mercier, who's oh, yeah. playing 74,000. So, yeah, I think now would be a good time to to send it with his hand. At this point, Berkey decides to bump it up to 32,000, and I'm not a big fan of this play. First off, when you do raise in the flop, you want to make your range a little more polarized. You want to have some stronger hands or some weaker hands that are going to do well in an all-in situation. Now, I know when you have bottom pair in a flush draw, it's kind of hard for you to ever to be that far behind. I mean, this is by far the worst situation. And he's up against top set and still has 26% equity. But the point remains that when you have a pair on a flush draw, it's better to play turns and rivers. And if you do raise, you want to maybe work in a bluff like a hand like queen 10 or queen 9 suited or 9 7 suited. And you don't really want to be raising with hands like this that if you do get all in, you're going to be behind. Additionally, if you want to raise for value, you want to use some hands like Ace-Jack or 8-8, eight, eight, some hands that are very strong and unlikely to be behind. Now, of course, in this situation, both those hands are dead, so that's good for you, but it's not going to be too often that when your opponent three bets and bets the flop, that they have top set. In fact, mainly they're going to have draws or two pair or top pair. They're not likely to have a hand this strong very often at all. So, I don't really like the raise, but he decides to make a 32,000, and I'm not a big fan of the size either. This raise size sort of tells your opponent, hey man, I'm committing to the pot here. If you jam, I'm going to call it off. If he was looking to pick a size with a few more bluffs, I think we'd see a raise to something a little bit more along the lines of 26 or 27,000. So if you're going to raise this hand on this flop, pick a smaller size so that you can also work some bluffs in. While you could raise to 30k as a bluff here, the problem is you're going to be getting pretty good odds on a call, so it doesn't really look that bluff heavy. So in general, I would not raise this hand. I would pick some bluffier hands, some stronger hands, and in general, I look to play my range as a call. In fact, you can make a good argument to raise no hands here in position as Berkey that really take advantage of position. Also, you're less likely to have hands like aces or jacks because those hands would probably forbet preflop. Back over to pocket aces, now Mercier has to decide whether he should fast play or go for the trap. And in general, I'm a fan of trapping in these situations. If your opponent is bluffing, you want to give them a chance to bluff some later streets. And by calling, you protect some thinner hands you might have like ace-10 or ace-queen, and you don't want to get those in on the flop. So I'd probably generally prefer to go for a call, but I would say here it's a little bit different. When Berkey raises this large on the flop, he's basically saying that he wants to go with his hand. So I don't mind jamming here, but keep in mind you want to have it in your arsenal to trap in this spot to protect your range. Yeah, what happened? Twice. And there it is. They get it in pretty quickly. That looks like the best hand. And they're going to run it twice, I think they said. Let's see what happens. I think the board's going to pair on the first run. That's what I think. I think they're going to chop. Yeah. I think Jason's going to have him drawing dead on the turn. Ooh, Ooh. So sick to hit two pair and be dead. Wait, what did he just say? Ooh, Ooh. So sick to hit two pair and be dead. Am I missing something or... Hmm. You guys really enjoyed the theory-based stuff I did recently, so we're going to do some more right here today. Drawing live means not drawing dead. You are drawing to a hand that will win if successful. Now let's look at what drawing dead means, just so we can get some comparison. Playing a drawing hand that will lose even if successful. Playing a hand that can never improve beyond the opponent's hand. So let's go back to this example here, and let's look here. So we have 8-6, 2 pair, and a flush draw. And over here we have pocket aces for top set. Now, you might note that there are currently 4 hearts for Matt Berkey's hand. If a fifth heart comes on the river, that's going to make a flush. Now, I pulled up the, ho the poker hand rankings just so that we could make sure we're all on the same page here. As you might see, three of a kind is ranked sixth. Berkey's two pair is ranked seventh. But if another heart comes, he's going to make a flush. Now, flush is uh, five cards that are all of the same suit. Now, as you can see here, he has four of the same suit. And that fifth heart will actually go ahead and give him a hand that can beat Berkey's holding. So, not drawing dead, just wanted to clear that up. So sick to hit two pair and be dead. So, Jason wins the first board. Honeymoon money. 
Wow. Wow. So that is what I like to call a nice pot for Jason Mercier. Mercier. He's going to win 100000 on that hand. I can't get a fucking pair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Note to self, get aces more. Thank you for joining me here today for Poker Hands. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that subscribe button so you can be notified for when my new videos come out.